Hi guys, welcome back to another episode on Genetics Creations and today I'm going to be showing you another tutorial on crochet. It will involve the half double crochet. I do have a tutorial for that stitch specifically. I will put the links down below in the comments. But this project right here is one of my go-to favorites. I wear this all the time. This is my own scarf and um, it's an infinity scarf. Um, infinity just means that it goes in a big giant circle. You can wear it long or you can double it up very nicely to be worn as such. If you know me, you will know that I am always in a simple t-shirt, jeans, tank top jeans type of outfit and scarves and boots. Scarves and boots are what I feel like are my go-to accessory of choice to always make it feel like my outfit is put together. So you'll always find me in a scarf. And this one's great because it's lightweight. Um, it's a it's a lighter yarn. I used a three level yarn, and I'll definitely give you a close up of the yarn that I used for that. Um, but it's light, and yet it still drapes as if it was a heavier item, and that's something that's very hard to do. Usually, when you go lighter on the yarn, it tends to almost sit on you kind of funny. This one actually still drapes on you very nicely and um, and it's still light and airy as you can tell. I'm wearing it with a tank top um, out in the sun and it's like in the 80s here which you know in the evening it'll be a little bit more important to have a scarf. Maybe not so much right now but for the sake of this project um, here you guys go. We'll give you a close-up of the stitch and you can see how the colors change. I'll show you the yarn and we'll go through how to do this. Uh, make sure to stay through because I do show you a few tips on the first couple rows. And then at the end, I'll show you a few other yarns that I've used the same exact pattern on, um, both as a cowl and an infinity scarf with some other textures and colors. All right, guys, let's get stitching. First of all, let's talk about the supplies that you are going to need for this project I used Yarnby Delish Boutique. So I do use the full skein. The skein is 590 yards. You can choose to use slightly less or slightly more depending on how thick or how thin you want the yarn or the scarf to actually run. As you can see here, and I will put, uh, make sure you guys can read it. This is a level three. It is a lightweight yarn and the recommended hook is gonna be your 4.5 millimeter. Now, I tell you guys I break the rules all the time because the one I actually used was the 6.5 millimeter or the uh, size K hook. So those are your, you can break the rules, you can try to go with these rules. All that's going to do is change how tight the stitch ends up being, but the project itself will all look the same. I like the fact that this one changes colors often, so it gives a nice variation to the project when it is all said and done. And otherwise, it is a nice, simple stitch. Uh, we're gonna start with several chains. There's a couple tips I'm gonna show you throughout to make sure that certain things stay the way you need them to. And then after that, it's a bunch of half double crochets. So we're gonna start with a slip knot. And if you're making an infinity scarf, you're going to chain 200 loosely. If you're making a cowl, you will chain 100. For the sake of this project, I'm probably gonna be chaining less, but you just wanna make a nice, easy, loose chain for your first row and to get us started. And what I will tell you is one of the secrets to this pattern is to stop here and I'll give you a trick. Now it's a huge key that you see this chain looks like a braid all the way across. The biggest thing is you don't want it to twist. And while it may be easy to twist when you are good at maintaining your, your tension, when you are a beginner, the tension is the hardest thing to learn. So I have a little trick here that will help you make this project smoothly without any issues. Once you have this small amount, just a little bit more than the length of the hook, I want you to straighten it all out. Make sure none of it's twisted. Straighten it all out. And then you're gonna grab this last chain and you're gonna bop it on your hook just like so. And I'll show you how we do that later and use that to create the scarf. I'm gonna go one step further, put a little clip on it, and we're gonna keep chaining. So go ahead and chain your 200 and meet me 
at the end of that chain and I'll show you what to do next. So through the magic of YouTube, we are going to pretend that this is 200 chains and I'm gonna show you guys what to do next. As you can see, nothing is twisting. It's all done together. Now what we're gonna do is slip stitch into that chain. And since we have it still hooked here, this is what makes this so much easier. You know there's no twisting. You're just gonna slide that all the way up and we're gonna slip stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through all the chains on the hook and it is now joined. So you're gonna start by chain one and we're gonna half double crochet into the first stitch and into each stitch across. For those of you who don't know how to half double crochet, I do have a tutorial on that. I will put the link in the comments below, but make sure that you're just doing a nice, easy, half double crochet in each stitch all the way to the beginning of our circle. So I'm gonna use the magic of YouTube and fast forward us to the end. Feel free to do your 200 stitches and see me at the next step. Now you guys should all have a much longer version of what you see here. So we have our chain has gone around and now we have our half double crochets all the way into the beginning. Now I haven't yet gone into the beginning, so let's walk through that. In some other projects, they may say to slip stitch and stuff like that, but this project's gonna work as a spiral and you're gonna keep going in circles until you get the desired width because in your project, this is your length and your width is going to come this direction. So to start row two, make sure you don't have any twists. If you see right there, it twists right there. You don't wanna have that. You wanna make sure that it is flat all the way around and that nothing is twisting. That will make sure that you are spiraling the correct way. You're going to aim now. This is where it gets a little tricky. In, normally we go into both loops. I know some videos I've walked you through front loops only and back loops only, and this is standard. However, you're gonna see that just below that, there is another piece of yarn right there. We're gonna grab all three loops. So when you pull this open, you're going to see one, two, three. You're going to go right in there and you're gonna have three loops on the hook. So let's show you what that looks like. Yarn over, insert the hook. So pull this open. You wanna insert it below that hidden loop right there. And when you pull up, you should see, and I'll try to show you here, one, two, and three loops on your hook. You're going to pull up one, pull up three and you're gonna keep going. I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna pull that open so I can see that one I need to go under, and you're gonna go under that one, pull up one, pull up three. I can see that one right there. I wanna go under it, yarn over, insert the hook. I have those three right there, pull up one, pull up three. So we're gonna keep going so I can show you what it looks like when you get to the next row. Go ahead and work all the way across and we'll once again put the magic of YouTube into effect and I will see you when you are ready to start your third row. As you guys can see, I'm about to make that last stitch in that second row. And you guys can see what I love about pulling on the three loops instead of the two is you get a nice fluffier finish than you would if you were just doing a standard half double crochet. But as I said, we are working in a spiral. So you will no longer need to count stitches for the rest of this one. You are just gonna continue working into this third row starts right here. And it's just a smooth transition from row to row because all you're doing is finding that hidden yarn strand right there that we're gonna go under and we're gonna keep going. 
and you're just gonna keep finding it and it gets easier as you get your rhythm um, your your hook will naturally find the one to go under it's it's got it just kind of shapes out really well as you keep going once you get past those first couple rows and you keep going and you will eventually have yourself an infinity scarf or a cowl at your desired width and just it works as a spiral so you're just going to continue going in circles and i usually do that until i run out of yarn or if I have too much yarn for the specific project, then whenever I reach my desired width, that is when I will just fasten it off and weave in those ends. I did one more row, wanted to check in and show you guys the progress. As you can see, this is where that row starts. You can tell where the rows come together. Once it is wider, this you will not notice. Plus you'll have another one when you um, fasten off. Let's say I was going to end my project. The best way that I do is we've been doing half double crochets. I like to gradually lower down. So this last one, I'm going to do a single crochet. So I'm just going to insert the hook in the same spot I normally would without yarning over first. So normally we yarn over first. Instead, these last two, I'm going to do a single crochet. I do have a tutorial available for that. I will go ahead and put that in the comments as well. And then lastly, we're going to do a slip stitch. So you're going to insert the hook, pull through all loops on hook. Then I would fasten off by cutting here and pulling through, making that tight, and then weaving in my ends. Now, obviously, if you guys are doing a full scarf, this is gonna look much larger. I'm just doing a small piece for the sake of this video. But then you weave all these in and you have yourself a beautiful infinity scarf. All right, guys, and congratulations on completing that project. Um, I would love to hear how it's going, so please tell me in the comments. Let me know what questions you have, what struggles you're having, because trust me, I promise you I'll do everything I can to help you guys better complete your projects. But like I promised, I'm going to show you a few different yarns that I've used uh, the same pattern on, um, but different textures and different weights. This one, these were both worked with two strands at once. This is a cowl, so this is when you chain 100 in the beginning. So you can see that it changes colors just a little bit differently because I'm working two different strands at the exact same time. Just gives it a nice fun look. This was actually a kid's yarn, something I totally thought. This one and this one, both children's yarns. Something I totally thought wouldn't look that great. When I bought the skein, it was just super discounted and I always like to challenge myself to try something new, something I would totally, totally recommend everyone do because just because it doesn't look good in a skein of yarn does not necessarily mean it's not gonna look good in a completed project. Here are a few other ones. This is done, I believe, with the basic stitch, if I recall correctly. Um, Basic Stitch is a brand of yarn as well, something I do tend to always have on hand in different colors. So I will do some reviews on that and guide you through those as more tutorials come out. This was with that Ice Cream Scoop yarn. It is another Lion Brand yarn. It is another baby yarn, but it has a real good texture and a nice airy weight to that one as well. This is another baby yarn. Bernat um, makes this one. And this is the gray with the yellows. This one, the colors change on their own. So I did not change the color. It's another ombre. I do love my ombres. You will learn that about me. This is one I had two very lovely yarns. This is the Nothing But Butter yarn. I've done a review on that. And I will put that one in the links below as well. So you guys can see the different colors. But this was another one. I actually had a little bit left and it wasn't enough to complete the project. So I blended the two colors together so I could make use of what I had. And I made it a point to, I don't count my stitches on this pattern. I didn't count my rows or anything. I just changed colors haphazardly and I tried to make it as random as possible. So creates a nice striped look. I really love the way it feels. Um, that This yarn is one of my favorites. I can't say it enough. And then just one other, this also was working the two strands at a time. Another one that I think was a kid's yarn and to kind of break up the harsh transitions 
you work two strands. I usually take one from the beginning and one from the end and work them at the same time and you get a lovelier different change of colors than what you're seeing. So get creative, break the rules. Uh, it definitely makes things a lot of fun, but as you can see, this pattern that you just mastered um, will give you a lot of different looks and a lot of fun so let me know how it goes otherwise stay tuned subscribe i have so much more coming more tutorials more accessories more things that people are looking to make and i'll walk you through it as best as we can so we can all keep stitching i'll see you soon